Hey everybody, my name is Joe Pivarunas. I'm the founder and managing editor of Nanoize. We're a boutique media and research firm covering disruptive tech stocks for a broad audience of retail and institutional investors across the globe. Today we're going to talk about a company called Ouster, and we've asked the question here, is this the best LiDAR stock? Now before we get into that, I wanted to touch on some housekeeping issues. So we've, I guess over the last three months, been delivering videos on YouTube and the feedback that we've been given has been largely very positive and we were recently approved as a YouTube partner so we're going to continue producing videos. Now your feedback on the delivery and quality has helped make our presentations better but we're certainly learning as we go. So we started out with out having mics and that was horrible and then we bought some cheap noise cancellation mics and, and those are getting better but we're kind of learning as we go in terms of the best mechanisms and technologies to use to record videos. We've recently switched to PowerPoint. That works well for being able to put in like annotations, for example. And then we've really had some problems around the quality, which varies based on location. So one of the things that we do as a firm is scout technology. We've scouted technology all over the world. And I'm presently in Iraq right now scouting tech startups, of which there are actually some. And that's probably a interesting story for another time but um the takeaway here is that you know your feedback on what we're doing helps us get better and we're learning as we go we don't want to spend a lot of the money that premium subscribers give us on you know buying expensive mics and things like that and expensive software so we're trying to you know run lean and sometimes the quality will suffer so we appreciate your understanding in that respect now Let's get back to talking about today's topic, which is LiDAR. So the first thing that I wanted to touch on is the size of the opportunity. So the last article that we wrote and any articles that I refer to in this presentation will be put in the description of the video. So the last piece we wrote on eight LiDAR stocks, we had mentioned we weren't convinced that the TAM was quite large enough and a lot of people um, disagreed with that, fair enough. So we pulled together here four sources of market size from four different firms. And, you know, they're roughly around the same estimates, 2026, 2027, um, in terms of time frame. But you can see that the dollar amount varies to a certain extent. The average is about $4.17 billion. That's not very big. Now, what you need to remember about firms like this is they're usually a large team of analysts in Mumbai that produce as many of these reports as possible. Uh, soon they'll be produced out of Manila because you can get five Manila analysts for about two Mumbai analysts these days. So, you know, you need to take them for what they're worth. And in the um, accompanying research piece we did with this video, we said that a lot of times it's important just to have an answer and it's less important that's the right answer. So these market research reports should really be taken with a grain of salt because then when you look at a firm like Luminar, they put the, what's this, by 2030, they say that the LiDAR market is upwards of $200 billion. In the upper right-hand corner here, you see their quadrant, commercial trucking and consumer vehicle at, what, $180 billion. So you're getting, really getting some varied opinions in terms of the size. And what, there are some things that we can conclude regardless of how big this market is, first of all. The eight publicly traded firms that we've looked at have collectively in 2021 brought in $157 million in revenues. That's nothing. So they've barely tapped into whatever potential market exists. Given that any firm that can get in front of the competition and start capturing market share through strong revenue growth will become a leader. And that's the sort of company that we want to invest in. And the firm that we're gonna talk about today seems to be doing that. So Ouster, like the other firms that uh, of the eight, they also went to market using a SPAC. And fortunately, they delivered on their guidance. They brought in $34 million in 2021. And what we're really excited about would be this pie chart you see here. You know, look at the breakdown of these different verticals. So they've got smart infrastructure, robotics, industrial, automotive. Smart infrastructure was actually their fastest growing segment. And the other thing to note here is that they had 
what, 6,475 units shipped. Well, in their 10K, it says they've shipped a total of 10,000 ever. So that means in 2021, was, that was really their breakout year. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Now, when you look at their TAM estimates, relatively interesting, what, this totals about $8 billion or so. They believe that smart infrastructure, again, the segment they saw the strongest growth in, is the, has, is the biggest opportunity of these four areas. So it's great to see when you have a firm that's diversified across areas outside of just automotive. Automotive is difficult because you have a lot of, you know, testing and regulations to deal with and things like that. So you don't expect to go to market very quickly in automotive, but in these other areas, it's a lot easier to go to market. So one other thing I wanted to touch on was smart infrastructure revenues. They talked about how they had 86 deployed projects in 2021, and that's great. But you do the back of the napkin math on this stuff. It's 5 million revenues. That's 15% of their total. Divide that out by 86 projects, you get an average of $58,139. These are small pilot projects as opposed to large installations. Now you hope that those translate into larger projects, but uh, it's very important to you know, probe some of these things that firms say. So they said here, well, we have 24 additional smart infrastructure projects we landed in 2021 that they're gonna ship later on. We'll take that with a grain of salt, right? The other thing to note here is that uh, Ouster never had, they see they had one customer that accounted for more than 10% of revenues. That was 11% of revenues. They didn't say who that was, but we know that there's not a lot of customer concentration risk, which is great to see. So when we look at the auto opportunity, they bought a firm. Um, I, well, actually we'll talk about that on the next slide, but this was more about looking at how you need to question, you know, a lot of these LIDAR firms talk about, well, we're now working with this, you know, marquee auto manufacturer and there's all this promise in the future. So for example, Volvo's working with Luminar for cars and Ouster for trucks. And then Luminar said they may be providing LIDAR sensors for the Volvo XC90, which sold about 38,000 units in 2021. Well, at their price of $500 a vehicle, you know, that's a $19 million opportunity. That's not very big. And you also have to consider whether or not it's standard equipment. I believe it actually is on that model. But then if you look at Luminar's LiDAR deployed across every vehicle that Volvo makes as standard equipment, then that's more respectable, 30 or $350 million per annum. So, you know, it's very important to consider just what the upside is for these firms that are working with auto manufacturers who may or may not select their product, which may or may not be used on certain models. You know, and there's a lot of variables affecting, you know, how profitable, let's say how much revenue they're going to generate. We haven't even gotten to talk about profits yet, but when we look at revenues, these are Ouster's revenues for 2021. This is interesting. You can see they had product revenue growth of hundred percent. That's great. Services fell off a cliff, great. So we don't like services business models, they don't scale. You know, products and services, you know, products gonna scale more so than services. Ultimately, uh, software as a service model will scale the best. But what was interesting to note here is they had an increase in volume of 200% in terms of units sold. So why did revenues only increase 100%? That's because the average selling price declined by 34%. That's very interesting. That's because of economies of scale and it's what Velodyne was trying to do. So this is going to be a commodity product and the company that emerges as the leader is gonna to have to compete on price. And it's great to see that they're able to boost revenues um, while able to um, decrease the selling price. Now you're hoping that they're eventually going to be able to, to turn a profit, but that's a different conversation. And the other thing to note on this slide is that they're Revenue by geographic location, what they have less than half the revenues coming from the United States. That's great. We want to see uh, geographic revenue diversification. Now, the other thing to note for Ouster is their acquisition of a firm called Sense Photonics that's developing solid state flash LIDAR. And you can see it represented in this picture. We're not going to get into conversations about technology. But Ouster acquired this firm that had already taken in 48 million from names like Samsung and Shell. And then they established Ouster Automotive, which is gonna focus on digital LiDAR for consumer and commercial vehicles with production to start in 2025. Now we've seen 
plenty of LIDAR firms that would just have this value proposition right here with no revenues. What we like about Ouster is that they're already producing revenues and they have this you know, solid state offering that's gonna come down the road. And not only that, but they're really planning to boost revenues in this coming year. And we'll talk about that in a second. But before we get into that, we can look at our simple valuation ratio. And you can see we've taken the eight LIDAR firms here. They've all put out their Q4 2021 revenues. So we can calculate these ratios. And you can see that they're more largely overpriced. Uh, we don't invest in anything with a ratio over 40, so that excludes half. And then you've got AI there with a high ratio of 29, Ouster at 14, and then Velodyne, which is in a world of hurt at six, and Quantergy at nine. So we wouldn't consider Ouster to be excessively overvalued. This mechanism is great to do relative comparisons. You can see how overvalued Luminar is. They're the most overvalued of the lot, probably because there's a lot of hype around that firm. Now, speaking of hype, one thing you want to not pay attention to are the analysts out there who, similar to MBAs that produce market size estimates, don't have to be right. They just have to have some opinion. And you can see here that a city analyst came out with a stock price target for $17. Um, and then what months later, um, it looks like raised it to 19 from 18. So there was some, some point before that, that it was raised from 17 to 18, then raised to 19 from 18. And then more recently in February, lower to seven, this stuff is just rubbish. It, these arbitrary price targets are useless. It's just busy work for somebody that has nothing else better to do. Now this gentleman has a spreadsheet that he plugs his variables into and he'll do a Monte Carlo on it. And, and it's all quite sophisticated and cool and interesting, but it's useless if you're an investor. So don't pay attention to this stuff. Just pay attention to the things that, you know, do your own due diligence, pay attention to the metrics that matter. And one of those is revenue growth. So to finish this out, Ouster has a very aggressive 2022 revenue target of 65 million to 85 million. My gosh, if they hit this lower estimate, they're gonna double revenues from last year. And that is awesome. Um, what you wanna pay attention to, and they're not providing this in the 10K yet, is what the growth looks like across those verticals. So they can give you that percentage pie we looked at earlier, but because those are all moving, you can't really see what's happening unless they show you the numbers from year to year. So let's hope they do that. Now, in terms of investing in this firm, it's what a market cap of under $600 million way too small for us. So we don't invest in anything um, less than a billion dollars market cap, but it's certainly on our watch list. There's a lot to like about it. And I'll mention one last thing, and that's that they had, I noted in the 10K, they had a subpoena from an investigation by the SEC around June of 2021. They've noted that, and they said that they haven't, you know, there's no follow-up to that. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. SPACs are now, you know, being viewed with a great deal of, of regulatory scrutiny. So um, that, that was worth noting because if you see something like that in a 10K, you note it. Doesn't mean that something bad's gonna happen, but that's uh, certainly something that we, we noted and, and we'll pay attention to going forward. So that's about it. Please leave your questions, comments, feedback on our delivery and quality in the comments section so we can continue to improve. Make sure to subscribe to our video. We'll put all the accompanying research pieces in the description. And thank you very much for taking the time to watch this presentation today.